Hey everybody, you're watching Train Master Bob and my name is Bob Stafford. Actually retired train master from the BNSF Railroad and Abbott Model Railroader. Have been my whole life. And today I want to talk to you about uh, roofing on my Atlantic Hosiery Company building here that I've been building. And this is your stock Walters cornerstone roof here. Painted flat black. Went over it with uh, misting it with gray primer paint. And I was going to use pastel colors on it or Bragdon colors and weather it up. I just wasn't that happy with it. it just doesn't have any thing to it that stands out after all the work that's gone into the color in these bricks. So what I decided to do was to put a slate roof on here. And for the slate roof, I'm using Builders in Scale Slate Shingles. They're self adhesive shingle. Come in a sheet like this. And you just peel them off. One here so you can see it. And you got adhesive on the back, you apply them to the building. One trick about applying these is the space right here is not cut through. So when you first start to use these, the first thing you need to do is take a steel ruler right along this edge here and cut it. I always start this project, any new project, with a brand new X-Acto blade. Buy them in a package of 100. A lot more cost effective that way. I stop just short at the end here. I don't even I don't even cut through the paper. Just enough to cut the ends off here. And on the very end strip, notice uh, this piece here it does not have any shingles cut into it. I've got good adhesive on the back. There we go. Cut it right there. across here. Put them up against each other. Then we have to custom cut one to fit right here. I normally just take one of this, lay it down. Take my five millimeter pencil, mark where they're going to be. Take my X Acto knife and cut it. And I try to slide my knife when I make the cuts. Either cut that way. There we are. We got our border strip here going across the bottom of the roof, and then I just begin applying my shingles. 
Line it up with the edge. Put them up against each other. You know, I lived in northeastern Pennsylvania. S Slate was quarried in the area around Bangor, Penarge, or Wingap, Pennsylvania. There's lots of slate roofs and most big industrial buildings built in the uh, 1890s, 1880s, 1890. It had slate roofs on them. And I my piece across here and I marked with it. I'm going to cut it. All this one. Begin putting my second layer shingles on just in case of getting it started. I've cut right here half of the shingle off so that way when I start they'll overlap one shingle to the next. Putting it on here to just above the, the shingle. Straight is actually the hardest part of the application. Put a straight edge across there and here. When you first start to shingle, this is always a problem with it wanting to move around until you get it in place. And try to go up here and down. Now, put the next course on. It takes a long time to put these shingles on. I probably got about three hours putting shingles on the other side, I think. Didn't do it all at once. Again, we get to the end. I cut one to fit. I know you could take a pair of dividers across here. Oh, first one around, same problem there. We got to take shingle, cut half the shingle off, and then the backer piece, the piece you cut off will stay on the backer piece hopefully, and lift it up. It's the 
back side of the knife to hold it down. Try to get it to stick. Hold it there, bring it over here. Need to cut it right there. Now we'll cut it. Once uh, this is in, then we're going to put a flashing across the top for roof cap and then we'll paint the roof. put the final layer of slate shingles on the roof and I think I'm going to after the roof is painted with the slate color put a cap on there a metal cap popular way of doing these roofs way back when That was a method I saw on the roof back in Pennsylvania where the 
old time roofers did make a cap out of slate. Uh, I have no idea how they did it. You can't see very well from the street level. When you look up there, you see slate and you don't see any metal roofing. Here, I'm just getting all my pieces pushed in there nice and tight. because I'm only going to need a few pieces off of this sheet and it'll go back into the package. So I'm just cutting them off as I need them. I'll start from the other end and put the splice in the middle this time use up some of that material I have left over. This stuff is expensive but it's well worth the cost. Look at this, all the texture now that's in that roof, it'll catch the eye. As opposed to the flat, uninspiring surface that was originally there. Alrighty. Ready to paint the roof now. Well, we have the roof done. Now comes the question of uh, what color are we going to paint the shingles? This is a piece of actual slate from Pinardville, Pennsylvania, quarried from the Downey Quarry. And this is the color that uh, roofs would be made with Pinardville slate. And this is the color that uh, I have to try to match to. So now the great uh, mix and match experiment will begin. I got my piece of Pinardville slate down here and went in my paint drawer and the first thing I pulled out was slate gray. Guess what? Slate gray is not slate gray. Not even close. Another good color that's often good to use for a lot of things is this, this uh, taupe. Well, it's nowhere near close either. And I pulled up the neutral gray. Americana neutral gray. It's darn close. So now, what am I going to do to make this just a little bit darker and help it uh, blend in? I found the secret was to put in just a little bit of burnt umber. So 
I put some Americana, I put a big glob of Americana neutral gray in here. Had it just a squirt of burnt umber, mixed it in. Not too bad. I think I'm gonna go with this color. And I'm gonna also just uh, mix things up a little bit, put in a little more of the neutral gray over here. And I'm going to put a bit of the dark burnt armor in it, just so I can mix colors back and forth a little bit, not have a uniform color on the roof. So that's my plan. We'll see how it works out. Well, I mixed up some more. Used the uh, Americana natural gray and just put a little bit of dark burnt umber into it. And I got a little, just a little bit shade, different shade here, small amount of that. Left some darker stuff around here so I can just sort of mix colors back and forth and not have a uniformity of color as I paint the slate shingles. Now let's go on and let's see how this goes on the shingles and go from there. Because I'm really excited about getting this roof on and seeing how it turns on. Oh, just got all kinds of uh, memories of slate roofs all over the place when I, I lived back in Pennsylvania. And just enjoy uh, recreating those memories. Well, we're ready to start painting. Now, these are the brushes I normally use. Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joanne's Fabrics. And if you got a local craft shop still in your town, Art Shop, please buy them there, support them. And they all sell these. I like them because they have angled tips on them. I just find this to be so handy. And the first thing we're going to do is, remember, we dip our brush in some water and we get it wet. And then we're going to go into our paint and we're going to start. So let's see how it goes on. A little too wet. Okay. Paint. Only real wet because I'll mix it around a little bit and I'll get some from the other. I'm going to get some from over here. Okay, now let's go for some of the other color. Work from the top down because of the way the slates are overlaid at each other.
So I got the roof all painted on both sides. Now let's continue with our slate roof. We've got our basic color on here. As you can see, just got a lot of little white spots left in here. So I've taken some black craft paint here. Put in my little cup, mixed it with water. Got my angled brush. So I'm here to wipe the brush off of because I don't want to have a lot of wetness to it. So I get most of it out of there. And I've found that if you and it shingles, if you work your way up, it gets to wash underneath the shingles and helps get rid of the little white specks that are showing. light color because I don't want to get too much black into here and lose this variation in colors I've got here. So I'm trying to be careful not to do that. Get the areas where I've got a lot of white showing through. Okay, I think I'm going to call that good. For now, I'll let this totally dry before we go on to the next step here of highlighting these shingles. If you ever been to the slight country of Pennsylvania and you see all the houses and other buildings with slate roofs on them. You'll notice that that the roofs have got this particular shine to them. It's hard to explain, but when the sun's on them, there's a shine that comes up from the stone. And that's something that's, you know, if you look here, there is no, no shine. We got a mixture of colors, which is also true of, of the roofs. This is a trick I learned years ago from Don Sparrow. And that is to use Model Master Jet Exhaust Paint. And to lightly dry brush it onto the shingles. And then this will give that shiny appearance to the shingles. And it works. I've used it before. And we're going to use it again today. I believe Testers has discontinued the Model Master line, if I remember right. So I'm sure like MIG Ammo probably has a jet exhaust uh, uh, or any of the other military modeling uh, paint lines. I'm sure they've got jet exhaust, but, but now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to go do it to it. I've already stirred this with my stirring stick, prepared it. Basically, just I'm going to use a small angled brush this time. I'm just going to dip it in, wipe most of it off on a paper towel, start at the bottom, and just work my way up on the edges.
this. Basically, you want to try to get the edge of the shingle, not necessarily the whole shingle. It's going to be tedious. It's going to take a while. Get an idea what's involved here. my way all the way up, come back, get another area and work my way up. Just be patient, give you a shot of what that's starting to look like. See in here, hopefully how it's bringing a shine to the end of the shingles. And that's a unique thing about a slate roof. That makes it stand out. I guess the, I'm going to go ahead and work on the rest of this. That'll take a long time. It's boring. It's tedious. And I don't think you want to spend time watching me do this. But you got an idea. And when we get all done with this, I'll show you the end result. I got half of the roof uh, painted here now with the jet exhaust, dry brushing it. So I give you a close up here so you can see the difference. You can tell the difference between the left side where I've applied it right side where I have not uh, dry brushed on the exhaust uh, jet exhaust yet. So now I'm going to continue and finish up this side. I finished dry brushing the roof with the jet exhaust paint and I'm pretty happy the way it comes out. It's got that nice shine to it that you see on slate roofs back in Pennsylvania. here in the building. Just I don't even think I'm going to add weathering powders to it. I'm just afraid of ruining it. I like the look. The last thing we need to do to finish up the roof is to put our roof cap across here. I'm doing some research. What I found is the roof cap was made from lead so it was easily to sh it was easy to shape easy to solder whatever to make it waterproof but it was made it was made from lead back in the day so I've been thinking how am I going to do this and this is what I decided to try got a box of these uh, white shipping labels so I'm going to with the adhesive backing and I'm going to use these come across here mark out 24 inch wide strips and then score it down the middle so I have two 12 inch sides going down each side and that's what I'm going to use to make my metal seam with Taking my scale rule and I marked off one scale foot all the way across here on both sides. And I'm just going to take and all the way through this. I'm going to cut my way through. Be careful not going off the end here. We'll go off the end, and this will become my individual pieces for the top of my roof. And I think I'm probably going to need four of these, but as I'm painting this, I might as well just go ahead and make uh, extras because there's and save them. So there's going to become a time I'm going to need them again, I'm sure. I've 
Got my roof uh, caps all cut here, 12 square, uh, 12 inches across, and now I'm going to use neutral gray and slate gray, and we're going to paint these now. I'm taking my two colors and I put them onto an old lid for a palette, and now we're just going to go and we're going to dab them on. Okay, so I'll just go around like this. And I put my paintbrush in a little bit of water first to wet it up, just a little bit. And we're just going to act like we got the measles coming on over here. I'm just going to dab it all over this. And Okay, we've dabbed. Just try to make sure I don't have any white spots left. Nice light color on this. A little right here and there, I think. There, okay. All right, I guess I'll call it good. Let it dry. Our paint is dry, and now what I found out is that the the paint has like sealed the the uh, die mark here. So we're gonna have to come through and cut these off. So we'll just use the mark right here, line it up, run our come across here. These are loose, so make a, several white passes. We get them down, press them down nice and hard. There we go, turn them off. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing over here. And we'll get our strips out. I pulled a piece off here, I separated it. And we're just going to take our Sharpie here and go around the outer edges and eliminate that white. If I had a gray Sharpie, I'd be using that, but I don't. Okay, I've gone ahead and put my Sharpie on here. The next step is we have to crease this down the middle. So I'm just going to take my scale rule, measure in six inches from each end. My rule on here. going to pick this paper up and we're going to crease it down nice and tight and start picking this up. There we go, we got a crease in there. Now we can apply it to our roof. Go ahead and put the first piece down using the uh, Emery label paper, which is self adhesive. And now we just go ahead and finish it up. Okay, I got my uh, roof uh, top seam across there. And the last thing I'm going to do to blend it in is I've got a drawer here pre mixed. I got black acrylic paint, Next, dilute it down with some wet water, and we're just going to go and run that over the top of this a little bit, using a wider brush, and going downward, because that's the way the rain would take things. Just 
really dipping my brush in here and wiping excess off. And then we're going to turn this around and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, we'll let this dry and I like it. We'll see what it looks like. Let's try, see if I need to give it another coat of wash or not. Overall, it's looking good. Our roof cap is done. And now it's time to move on. And we'll be uh, uh, adding the warehouse section of the uh, Atlantic Hosiery Company onto the uh, structure in part four of this series. If you uh, like this video, please give this a thumbs up and uh, share it with your friends. And remember to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. This is uh, Bob uh, saying goodbye.